Hey, let's kick off the tech news today with an update to something I talked about yesterday, which is AMD's FSR on older GPUs running on floating point 16, uh, sorry, older ones falling back to FP32, floating point 32, versus newer GPUs running it at FP16 and the performance difference. I, in that video, said I don't think there would be an image quality difference, but would like to see more testing. Now, by the way, I do read all the comments on my channel, and I noticed that we had Tech Profile here, who does seem to be the uh, Capframe X Twitter account that we did feature uh, doing the floating point comparison, performance comparison in the last video. Uh, reached out and said that on their channel they do have an image quality comparison up. I went ahead and found that, and here it is, and the link will be in the description to my video. So here it is, and um, Capframe X was claiming that there is an indistinguishable difference, and well, I'm doing the slider here, guys, and I know you're going through YouTube compression, but I don't see a difference either. And you can feel free to find this. Uh, all my sources I talk about today will be linked in my description as my uh, subscribers, who are just beautiful people, are used to. By the way, even more beautiful people are people who hit that join button supporting what I do here financially. Best people in the entire world, did you know that? Anyway, uh, so I did want to get that update. Additionally, I also noticed that they had uh, not just the frame rate comparison and performance, uh, at that Capframe X uh, Twitter, but we also had some more detailed comparisons here. Link will also be in the description to this, and at a, a bitter, bit more of a zoom here, uh, you can now see that, again, we got the floating point 16 ultra quality and at performance, as well as the 32 ultra quality and performance, and you can compare things like total GPU time rather than just frame rate. Uh, which is an interesting comparison to look at. All right, so there's that update to what we talked about yesterday. Another update to something else we talked about yesterday was the, uh, the uh, RX 6600 XT, release date, pricing, all of that. It's looking like, as long as you believe Greymon 55, and this does sound reasonable, and I'll get into it, it's looking like the official announcement is coming up here in what? I'm looking at my calendar like four days now. I think it's coming up this weekend on July 30th uh, during, the Chi during the China Joy 2021 Expo. That is uh, Greymon's uh, uh, tweet here. But the thing is, AMD is um, uh, you know advertising that they're going to be taking place in this China Joy Expo. So that would make sense as a place to put it. And that would put the expected schedule here as the official announcement happening July 30th. We're expecting the unboxing embargo August 6th. Uh, to lift, and then the actual launch to happen August 11th. So those are the dates to look out for. Although I was reading the comments section down here, and I think somebody just mentioned Shanghai got hit by a typhoon yesterday, 300,000 evacuated, don't think there will be any expo on July 30th. I have, I have, I don't know, but uh, according to that comment, maybe these things will uh, be adjusted. So keep that in mind. In um, other AMD GPU news, but looking at the next gen, we're talking RDNA 3. We have had some interesting uh, rumors and tweets here as well. And again, make sure that we're tagging this as rumors and leaks uh, and all of that. But one thing that's interesting here is we're getting a, a huge number of cores, but it's looking like AMD is going to uh, be rebranding or changing what they've been calling compute units and you know, just something to look out for here. I think they're replacing them with WGP, like work group, um, what was that work group processors? Something like that. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest here that it's a little over my head what exactly the difference is here, other than just what they're calling this computation unit that might have something to do with the way game code interacts with the architecture. Uh, I, and maybe you know more than me in the comments, and as I said, I do read all the comments, so feel free to educate me a bit here if you know more than I do. We're also seeing more uh, tweets and rumors about the uh, the uh, bandwidth and the, and the bit bits of the infinity cache possibly being big. I like video cards article that summarized a lot of this and thrown it into a, um, a little chart here where you can see how uh, we got, you know, our, uh, this Navi 21, this is our like 6900 XT. And then we got the Navi 31, this is our rumored future GPU. 
which would we you know we'd assume would be a 7900 XT. Again, uh, we would expect this to be coming at the end of 2022. And if we throw this on here, if you look at the stream processors, we'd be up from 5120 to 15,360. Still on the 256-bit bus. Again, this is all according to rumors, so you know we'll see. And then uh, we, we're not sure about the memory configuration yet, but we're thinking the infin Infinity Cache looks like it'll be between 256 and 512, again, according to these tweets, so take it for what you will. And um, so now we've got to get this work group thing going on here, and they're saying that that would be 30, and that that would be FP32 cores per work group being 256 times 30 versus 128 times, I guess, 40 here. Um, Anyway, so this is what the rumors are pointing out. In terms of what sort of performance would we expect, uh, the folks over here at WCCF Tech have put together a chart comparing uh, if you tried to predict the performance of these cards uh, up against like NVIDIA's uh, based on the rumors, uh, we would see that the um, RDNA 3, which is rumored to be a, a, a possible multi-chip design, up against NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace, which I believe is not supposed to be a multi-chip design, uh, RDNA 3 would have have a performance lead over Lovelace, but then NVIDIA's rumored to be working on Hopper, which is a multi-chip design, uh, which I guess would then expect to have a performance lead over RDNA 3. And as I talked about yesterday, there's some well-known leakers speculating over whether NVIDIA might skip Lovelace if RDNA 3 was going to have too big of a performance lead, and whether NVIDIA might need to jump to Hopper to have the multi-chip design in order to compete. Again, this is all so much rumor and speculation and taking with grains of salt that I wouldn't read way too much into this, but if you're like me and you're just super interested in the GPUs and their future and all that, this is interesting stuff to think about. All right. Uh, in terms of CPUs, I found this interesting. So Puget Systems, uh, who you know build and sell a whole bunch of uh, custom PCs, a lot of times I think focusing on workstation type PCs, uh, posted that their uh, AMD versus Intel market share, now this is in this company's sales, not global market share, but in June, AMD was at 60-40 split for their sales percentages. Also, they recommend systems based on workflow and what they would predict to be the best system for the workflow. And again, they're seeing a lead here for AMD and what they've been recommending. And I, so anyway, if, if you're like, hey, AMD's been doing a great job in the CPU space, we're seeing a shift here because Intel has dominated for many, many years in the workstation space. Um, but we are seeing, um, seeing some payoff here in terms of AMD's uh, newer architectures being very impressive. Also in terms of CPUs, uh, over here at WCCF Tech, I found a, uh, a look at Intel Rocket Lake Xeon E2300 CPU lineup specs. So Xeon being, I think, a little more like workstation focused. Um, and I, so I'm more of a gamer, so I'm not going to dwell here too long. Uh, but they did uh, detail what the, uh, what the uh, products... Uh, lineup will look like here, which you can take a look at here. And again, the description uh, of my video will have a link to this article. I'm not too interested in this. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but hey, there it is. We don't have pricing specifics or anything like that quite yet. Now in gaming monitor space, this is a bit interesting for you esports players out here. We're seeing that LG Display, again, this is from WCCF Tech, like to cre credit my sources. Um, is saying that LG Display is one of two companies that stated they're working on a 480 hertz display. Now, this would most likely be targeting 1080p, since if you're in the esports crowd, you're trying to push frame rate rather than resolution. And like, why would you, you know, for example, want a 4K monitor at 480 hertz when you can't even run that, right? So uh, we would imagine that that would be targeting like a 1080p thing. In terms of when this would develop, it seems like development will begin in 2021, but these won't be uh, in production until late 2022. So, you know, It'll be a while until you get there, but apparently it is coming. The other company looking at this is AU Optronics, uh, which has stated the goal to create a 1080p screen with a refresh rate of up to 480 hertz. Um, but they're also stating they want to do a 4K display up to 240 hertz. I mean, cool, like I was saying, can't really run 4K super fast, but you know, maybe in the future. And also some esports titles, if you set all the settings really low, 
you know, uh, uh, you, you can get some, uh, some frame rates up there. All right, guys, I think that's it for me. Oh, we already talked about that. So I think that's it for me today. Thank you, guys. I uh, hope all of you have a fantastic day. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think about all this.